Hello and welcome to another Hero Quest video. Today I'm going to be painting the skeletons from the base set. I'm going to use the card as a rough guideline. Give me an idea of what colours to choose. The reason I want to stick roughly to the guideline of the card is so that when people see the card coming out in the game, they'll then recognise the miniature. The first colour up is going to be Pallid Bone. I'm going to use that as the base coat for the skeleton. You'll see that I've primed the skeleton white with a spray primer and attached it to a paint pot using a piece of blue tack. You could use double sided tape. You can buy commercially available handles which you can attach to a miniature but I find using a paint pot with a piece of blue tack is just as good. You'll also notice that I'm batch painting these models. There's four in the base set, so I want to paint all four at once. You also don't need to worry about being super careful when you're painting in the bones part of the skeleton. We're going to be touching up any mistakes we make with white paint later in the process. And now's that time when I'm going to pull out the white paint. In this case I'm using Vallejo game colour, dead white. And I'm just going to use it to touch up some of the areas of the skeleton that I've hit with the pallid bone colour by mistake. We're just trying to re-whiten any major areas that we hit with the skeleton colour. We don't need to be super critical about this stage because we're going to be adding more colours to the model. Now I'm going to paint the armour areas and the weapon of the skeleton. I'm going to use Broadsword Silver. You'll see there's several armoured plates on each skeleton and also the scythe blade and the hilt of the scythe as well. I do recommend that you batch paint all the bad guys in the set. Some of them are in groups of two some of them are in groups of four. Just do all the same figures at the same time. Make your life easier and get your set painted quicker. The next colour up I'm going to use ruddy fur and I'm using it to paint the boots and the leather work around the shoulders of the skeleton. They're not even really boots as they don't cover the skeleton's feet. They're more like leg warmers. <laughs> Furry leg warmers. But there you go. I couldn't really decide from looking at the picture on the card whether or not these the shoulder armour was bronze or leather. I decided to paint it as leather. Remember you don't need to stick to my colour palette. Use whichever colours you have available to you. Now I'm going to use some satchel brown. I'm going to use it to paint the shafts on the sides and also the strapping that's holding the metal armour onto the chests. I have mixed an equal amount of medium in with this paint and that's to thin it down and desaturate the colours. 
so it's not as dark basically. Ideally I would have liked the choice of a lighter colour brown but this is all I have currently. So unless we're made of money we'll work with what we've got. Now I'm going to paint a few areas of cloth on the skeletons and I'm going to use Caribbean blue. If you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know I really like this colour. For some reason the artist who painted these cards decided to paint a glowing blue effect on the faces of the skeletons. I'm going to avoid that, pretend it doesn't exist. It looks daft to me. So I won't be painting the faces of my skeletons with blue paint. For all the great things Hasbro has done with this re-release, they have made a few odd decisions in regards to the art department at least. Now I'm going to paint the wraps around the blade of the scythe and I'm going to use desolate brown. It's kind of an olive greeny browny colour and it looks quite cool in my opinion. It's also a very different colour to the colours previously used so it stands out a bit. There's only one of these areas of wrapping on each skeleton so it only take you a few seconds to do this job. Now looking at the armour and the metal blade on the scythe, I think they're too bright. So what I'm going to do is give them a wash by Grax Earthshade. That'll dull them down firstly and it'll also give a slightly brownish, rustish type colour. Which is what I would expect to find on an old decaying set of armour on a corpse in a dungeon. Not that I've been in too many dungeons with corpses to be fair. I guess we have to use our imaginations, eh? Well, that's the models done, and now just to do their bases. I have two different pots of grey paint here. I'm just going to keep the bases a solid colour. You could, if you wanted, paint, the paint like a stonework effect into the tops of the bases. I don't see the point because there's that many different colours of stone on the game board that they'll look daft in one colour if they're standing on another colour so I'm just going to keep them a solid grey. I started out painting them this lighter grey and then decided that it was too light and went for the darker grey. I'm quite glad I did. I prefer the darker grey in the long run. You might choose to use a different colour entirely for your bases. That's entirely up to you. You could paint them brown, for example. You could paint them red if you wanted to, to signify bad guys. It's entirely up to you. This dark grey colour was the most appealing to me. And that's it, the models are done. Now time to varnish them. Again, I always varnish, especially my Hero Quest models, because they're going to be in and out of plastic trays. You get a lot of handling, so Yep, varnish them would be my recommendation. These miniatures are made of a rather bendy plastic, so just be careful that you don't bend the sides too far one direction or the other, because you don't want your paint to crack. If you're careful, they'll not be a problem. Just try not to be too heavy handed with them. And there we go, there's the finished product. I'm quite satisfied with them. Yes, of course they could be painted better, but they're good enough. Considering they're going to be an archetypal type bad guy, they're going to be out in a lot of games, and they're going to see a lot of action. So, we'll want to get these miniatures painted. 
so we can get playing. There's nothing, in my opinion, worse than looking at a lump of grey or black or green plastic. Get them painted. There's really no reason not to. Even if you don't think you'll be capable of doing it, honestly you will. You can paint them as good as these without any effort whatsoever. Just use the right paints and a, make sure you use a primer and follow along with what I've done and you'll be able to do it. I would like to thank you for watching my video and if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next video.